my first ever appearance on television about Jesus and what he means to me, which is everything, at Central Tabernacle, Sunday evening, February the 1st, 1981. Over the past months in our Sunday evening service, we've had numerous people from our congregation come and share with us something vibrant that's transpired in their life. We're happy tonight to have a special guest, someone who's experienced the recreating power of Christ. His name is Steve Cuban. Steve, why don't you come and join me? Steve is a professional musician. He makes his livelihood making music. And that excites me because I enjoy music. That happens to be my profession too, though it surprises many. <laughs> Steve, we know you have a vibrant testimony to share with us tonight. Steve plays an active role in our television production. He runs the sound and also he assists us musically in the singing Christmas tree and other musical activities in the church. Steve, we're glad to have you here tonight. The Lord bless you as you share with us. Wow. <laughs> this is really a privilege to be here. Hi, Mom. I love you very much. <laughs> I became a Christian two years ago, and some people have asked me, what's been the change in my life? How has Christ affected me? I think the best way to describe this is to turn to God's Word. In Matthew 22, verse 37, some people asked Jesus what God's greatest commandment was. And Jesus answered them and said, this is the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Two years ago, I didn't have room for God in my life at all. And the reason was because I served a false God, and I didn't realize it. And what exactly do I mean by a false God? I just mean anything that keeps us from worshiping God and loving Him the way that He says and commands in His Word, and that is with all our heart. I've got an interesting thing because the false God that I worshiped was music. As far back as I can remember in my life, I've played music. I just wake up in my memory at about the age of three and a half and I was playing the piano. As I grew, I began to literally worship this. I remember in my early school years coming home from school not fellowshipping with any of my friends because I wanted to go home and get in the basement and play music. And that really was my life all the way up through primary school and into high school. And at the age of 17, I graduated from high school. Within one week of graduating, I was studying music in Boston at perhaps the world's most renowned music school for contemporary music, Berklee College of Music. And that shows you the dedication that I had for music and the determination. I lived music 18 hours a day. I remember many times working through the night on an assignment because I love music so much. I remember one time, Monday morning, I started the assignment. Friday night, I finished it. No sleep. My whole goal in life was to get as good in music as I possibly can in the shortest amount of time. And I guess if we're going to serve a false god, we might as well serve him with all the zeal we have, and I certainly did. But after eight months, a miraculous thing took place in my life. And I can't go into the details of how I came to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. But basically it came down to the fact that God showed me that this book is more than just a book. Historically, it's true. Prophetically, things that were predicted Hundreds and even a thousand years came true. And I find that incredible. I couldn't believe it. I saw this and I went, wow, Lord. And God said to me, Steve, if you believe all these things that can be proven historically and archaeologically and by prophecy, then why don't you believe the spiritual things in the book that can't be proven by man's knowledge? I said, Lord, I don't know about this. But I got on my knees one day in my little dormitory room. I didn't care who walked in that door. I said, Lord Jesus, if you're there, and I sure hope you are, I love you. And I ask you to come into my heart. I didn't get zapped or anything. I just got up off my knees. I didn't feel any different. But you know, something started to happen from that point on. When I began to sin, whenever I took the Lord's name in vain, pow, God spoke to me. Whenever I looked at a woman with lust, pow, God spoke to me. God's Holy Spirit did a miracle in my life. And just over the period of a few following months as I still worked hard at school, I was on my knees in prayer and I came to a realization. I said, God, you want me to give it all to you, don't you? And the Lord said, yes, I do. I said, even my music? He said, yes. I gave him my music. I said, Lord Jesus, I give you my music. And from that day on, hallelujah, it's been the greatest walk that I have ever had in my life and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. 
But I tell you, Christ began to live in me that day. And all I want to say to you is examine yourself. Are you serving a false god? It might be money, it might be university. It might even be our family at home. And all these things are good in themselves, but only when Jesus is first in your life are they put in their proper perspective. Let people ask themselves this question, do I know God personally in my heart? And if you don't, I pray before this service is over that you'll accept him. And you might say, oh, but I enjoy my false God. I'm having a good time. Yeah, well, I granted, I had a wonderful time serving my music for 16 years. But wow, you know that false God that I once served, I now recognize as being a special gift God has given to me to use to his glory. And I just give him all the praise and all the glory, and I do love him tonight, and I pray that everyone in here does. Amen and thank you. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether Steve should stick in music or maybe he should become a preacher.